On the other hand, we have to take care of our own security, provide for ourselves, so that when the, when the collapse happens, we're not desperate and we can fall back on, you know, what we're supposed to have. And we can talk later. Like we had the Ernie Hancock show today. You know, and Ernie Hancock's a pretty pretty hardcore anarchist. And he's like, well, you know, the track record of government is, is, is atrocious. And he's right, you know. And so his answer is there shouldn't be a government at all. And but my answer to people like that is, well, look, you know, let's at least get back to the concept of local communities controlling their own fates, and which is what we're supposed to have. Being our own security. You know, like, I think another good uh, example is, who here saw that, that miniseries on, on John Adams? See that? What's the opening scene? What was the opening scene? Yeah, now I'm a quiz. Yeah. <laughs> 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 me I should never raise my hand. That's the thing. Did you get the <laughs> the, the opening scene is he's, he comes home from a long, hard day of being a lawyer. Oh, oh yeah. That's right? Right. <laughs> he kicks, picks up his wig, kicks off his boots. He's getting ready to put his feet up by the fire. And all of a sudden, a bell starts to ring. And, you know, it's a, it's a fire bell, fire alarm. Mm. He jumps up, no wig on, throws his boots on, runs out in the street, grabs a bucket, and starts friggin' bailing like everybody else is doing. He didn't sit on the couch and go, whoa, wow, must be a fire somewhere. <laughs> I sure hope the fire department gets there in time or so someone doesn't die, you know, or half the town doesn't burn down. You know, what's on, what time does watching, you know, Dance with the Stars come on? He didn't do that. He got up his butt and he went out there and took care of himself, just like we're supposed to do now. We should be in our own volunteer fire departments. We should be in our own posses, our own neighborhood watches. We should be our own military force and, and militia. Military and law enforcement, militia posse. You're the backbone of that infrastructure. It's you. And if you advocate that responsibility and leave it to, to the professionals, there is no such thing as a free lunch, like Highland said. He's right. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Then who will guard the guardians? You know the answer to that. Nobody will. They'll guard themselves. The elite over you will decide what limitations are on their own power if you give them power. So you have to be your own security and your own provider. All right, so that's where we're going to go with, 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 with the veteran, just the whole point. And really, you know, it, it's what has to be done in this country anyway. People are going to have to get squared away and take responsibility. By default, they'll have to. When the collapse happens, they'll have no choice. But most of us not, are not ready for it. You know? So the more ready we can get, the better we'll be able to resist. This is the, the criticism I have with guys like Ernie. It's like, hey, bud, they got a super government plan to put over top of you. So you better get with trying to strengthen what you have now. And once we defeat that you know, mega cancer that's coming in, trying to infect us, you know, the global, the global governance and all that nonsense and the global fiat system over us. That's what's happening next. You know that, right? And the UN's already openly advocated for a new global currency in place in the dollar. You know, special drawing rights by the IMF. The IMF chairman was talking about that. You want to use that as an interim currency on the way to a new global currency. And the IMF will probably morph into the new Fed. So it's not like they're going to, you know, let the market take care of it. Uh -uh. So anyway. That's what we're kind of planning on doing with veterans. Um, I'm going to uh, in, unveil this like on February 8th as, as, a, as a, you know, a national kind of thing. But you know, our focus is, is the veterans and, and those who've taken an oath. So that's going to be our focus. I really do think veterans play a key role. Um, for right or wrong, they're looked upon with, whether it's accurate or not, looked upon as leaders in their community, or at least potential leaders. So. And I think veterans are a little bit different in this sense. We're certainly we're all in this together. So I don't want to disparage guys who've never served, like yourself. But the point is, is, is that the one thing we do have in common, the veterans do, is that they at least were willing to work hard and do the thing that needed to be done, even though they were difficult. They understood, and they planned for contingencies. They planned for worst case scenarios. I mean, when I was a paratrooper, when I weighed about 60 pounds less than I do now, um, they, our mission was to parachute in to Iran, of all places, in Afghanistan way back then. And we knew it was a one-way mission, like long range reconnaissance. It was a crazy, crazy mission we were planning for. But we, we, you know, we trained and prepared for this worst-case scenario of a one-way mission, and we were okay with it. We got ourselves 
in our heads, we just, you know, of course, we were young and dumb, too, so. But the point is, is that, you know, that's the one common, veterans do have that under their belt. They know what it's like to, to plan for contingencies and to be disciplined about preparing and planning. So they have that ability. And then there's that oath. It's there. We should use it for good. The founders put it there for a reason. There's, they broke with tradition. Before that, it was an oath to the queen and her progeny, or to the king and his progeny. Still is. You go to New Zealand or, or Canada, look at their official oath, it's to the queen and her progeny. Well, they broke with that tradition. They did that for a very good reason. Because who's sovereign here? We are. I am. Right. And in, in their idea, as, as we made it up very clearly in the Declaration, governments only have the powers given to them by the people. And only for certain ends to secure liberty. You know? So even if you were a total if I let them, what? If I let them, well, that's fine too. But the point is, though, is that they at least broke with the tradition of you know the king owns you, and the king owns the country, and you're swearing allegiance to him. You know, in Germany, the oath was to the Führer. You know, if you ever watch the movie Valkyrie, it opens up this pretty chilling scene. The very first thing you hear is this, you know, actual. Recording of, the, of Germans taking the oath to the Fuhrer to give their life to the Fuhrer in total obedience. We have something different, and so we can use that, and we should and we are, to get them to understand that the Constitution is simply, you know, an imperfect attempt and method of securing our liberty. I tell veterans all the time. Um, until the people of this country decide that the Constitution no longer serves them, we are oath bound to defend it. They are not oath bound to defend it. That's why I never insist that, that people who have never served in the military should have to take an oath. You never were required to take an oath. There's no such thing as a requirement that Americans take an oath to anything, right? Yeah. But who here hasn't pledged allegiance to the flag and to the republic? That's a more recent addition. Is it in the, is it in the Constitution? No, I it's said not. who here. Who has to take the oath? Government has to take the oath. Government officers, every one of them, from the president down to local dog catcher, everyone in between, has to take that oath. They're taking an oath to what you created, the people. I know, I understand what Senator Spooner's argument. He wasn't there, neither were we, even further removed. But the point is, though, is they are bound, we are not. So you do reserve, of course, as the Declaration makes clear, the authority to cast even this government off, even the Constitution, if you need to, to secure your liberties. But until you do, it's certainly not the place of the army or some general to go do it for you. That's why a military coup is ridiculous. It's our contract. And we're it's your contract. To sign. That's right. You can declare it null and void. Yeah. But if I want to give it to them, if they want to work for me, they... But you can't have an agent of the contract, someone in the government, deciding to scrap it. Right. It doesn't work that way. That's why they put the oath there. They weren't dummies. Okay? They put the oath there for that reason. So the people still retain the authority to throw it off if they need to, if they, if they decide to. But until they do, those who are in service, just those who are current service, must support and defend it. And the, us veterans, I feel the same way. I feel that way, personally. But... So, you know, the question is how. And I can't, like, I, you know, I can't think of any better way within whatever time we have left. I've heard estimates of six months to a year. You know, John Williams of shadowstats.com has said that based on his readings of the actual numbers that he thinks will be hitting hyperinflation sometime between six months and 18 months. So we don't know how much time we have left. But I really can't think of a better thing to do to get ready and to try to get the veterans geared up, and then from there it's spread out to the rest of the community. So but if you guys have any other ideas, uh, and of course communication would be an important part of that too. You know, what we saw yesterday was a good wake up call on that. So we're, we're gonna work on, you know, and we're gonna encourage other organizations to establish ham radio you know, communications across the country, and also local, you know, whether it's a local uh, cell phone system or whatever, that's off the grid, whatever it takes. Um, you had a question? You had any questions? Can I say this, something short? That yeah, go ahead. Shoot. Question. I just want to say, when I was 17, I joined the Marines of Public Education. I knew nothing of the Constitution. 
And when I was standing on the yellow footprints, I was introduced to the Uniform Code of Military Conduct. Right. When I came back from Vietnam, they sent me to riot control school, which was martial law school. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things my instructor told me has been stuck in my head for 40 years. You're still in the Marines? No. I said, what, I was, when I came back, I went to riot control school. In the, the Marine Corps. And one of the things the instructor told us, this is in 1970, they're your fellow Americans. Use the minimum force necessary, but all that's necessary. Mm -hmm. They were telling us that if they ordered us to, yeah. to kill our fellow citizens, yeah. and I'm ashamed to say I'd have done it. And that's why I think the Oath Keepers is so important, because our GIs don't know jack about the Constitution, and they know about the chain of command, and if you think you're going to fight them off, you've never been in combat. Right. So how goes the education of the military? Well, it, it's, it's a long, hard slog. Um, I was just reading the Military Officer, which is a publication by the DOD, and in that publication, they use MacArthur, um, his criticism of, of Truman, as an example of, of why it is that he was wrong and why it is that, that a military officer, the way you keep, this is what it says, the way you keep your oath to defend the Constitution is by obeying the civilian chain of command, meaning the president. And that's all they say. And so they kind of twist what MacArthur did and how that relates to the Constitution. It doesn't relate to the Constitution at all. He was criticizing his superior commander as though he was criticizing a, a, you know, a superior general. That's why he got in hot water. Not that, not that you know, Truman didn't order him to do something unconstitutional, and he refused. That would have been different. You know what I mean? So they just, they just kind of twist it, and that's what they do. The text is there. They can't deny it. Mm -hmm. So they got to kind of twist it and mean something. They want it to mean the same as the oath to the Fuhrer. And so they twist and, and you know, they bring the jag in, artful lawyers to manipulate it. The text means, means something else. So it's a long, hard fight. We've only been around two years. So but that's why, but that's what, you know, we're like a guerrilla tactic. We're not trying, I don't go to the DOD hat in hand or to, you know, to West Point and say, please teach the Constitution. We just go do it directly, you know, and go right around them. So it's kind of like alternate media. You know, the, you know, the, the internet and alternate media is, is killing mainstream media. We're going right, this is what's happening now, an explosion of awareness because of that. This is why I have faith. I think that if we have enough time, we're right here. If we can get to, you know, 10, 15 years from now, I think we'll win. But the problem is, is a collapse is going to come sooner than later, and that's the big thing that worries me, is it, they might shut down our ability to reach more people. But anyway, I think eventually, given more time, we'll, we'll prevail even in the military. So, but we might run out of time. They, they tried to shut down the media in uh, Egypt, too, but then, oh, sure. then yeah. they went back to the old school printing out flyers. Yeah. And they went door to door, so it worked out. Right. Yeah, it was like the low school uh, Twitter. Yeah, was these like little Thomas things. Payne did, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, you know, uh, you're, but you're right. I mean, you know, the, uh, this is like I always tell people, look, you know, so why do you even start this organization? I said, well, look, you know, if they were only used abroad, then the UCMJ would probably be sufficient, okay, if you're only being used overseas. There's still morality, okay, and UCMJ, not bad. They get instructions on preventing another Mila massacre. They get instructions on preventing another another Abu Ghraib, the latest latest example that's used. So they get decent instruction on the UCMJ, but they're not taught the Constitution. And if you're going to use them here at home, that's why we have to teach the Constitution. So this is what we're up against. You know, we're, they don't learn. You're right. Public schools, you're intentionally kept ignorant. In fact, you're taught the exact opposite. Well, so. I was the typical jarhead. I'm just telling. Oh, you. I know. I know. I know. But you've since uh, learned. But it, so that, that is a problem. And, and, but here, you know, you saw that. You see the video of, us, of Sergeant May. Did you see that video on our, on our, on our website? Yes. Uh, yeah. Sergeant I, May, the Utah National Guardsman. Yes. So that is, you know, the silver lining is that there are guys like that, and you know, he popped up and he did that long before it was Oath Keepers. So, but our whole point is to create more Sergeant Mays, more guys who are, you know, aware of the Constitution. And, and have an understanding that there has to be a line in some place. How do you get to those particular folks that are like maybe in the military or other? Because they, they got them very secluded. Hey, they all, they that's what it, the, the perception is. The perception yeah. is that. And I think what you're doing is, is wonderful because 
the, the main thing is the touching of the people because people can hear something. Right. It doesn't matter.